I'm Dr. Ali Matu. I might have lost my voice, but the show must go on. Let's talk about the psychology of Comic-Con on the Psych Show. It's the last day of San Diego Comic-Con and I'm finally starting to get my voice back. I had an awesome time this year being on a few panels, meeting up with some old friends, and making some whole new ones in the process. I also got to do a lot of fun, geeky things like laser tag, high-fiving orphan blacks Tatiana Maslany, and getting to meet all my favorite YouTube heroes from Nerdist News. But what exactly is Comic-Con? It's a living, growing, thriving community. It's gonna be like Disneyland for your hobby, your passion. Big movie studios show trailers and bring actors and stuff, and that's what gets reported on the news the most. But, like, it's seeing a, a costume on display for the first time, or buying, you know, a graphic novel or a poster, you know, being in that panel and discussing, you know, one element of one level of one video game, those small moments. It is a place where there is no judgment. It's where you can live your truth. It's where you can dress and be whoever you want to be, and you will find people around you going rock on. Think of it like the Super Bowl for people who like comic books and science fiction, fantasy, video games, and stuff like that. Why do people go to Comic-Con? I come to Comic-Con because I love connecting with friends. Uh, some of those friends I've not even met yet, but you know, this is a place where a lot of us have the same passions. It might be for different fandoms, it might be for different stories, but we all appreciate really just loving a story or a character that's beyond ourselves and talking way too long about what it means. I just think this gathering of people is so cool. I just love seeing how uh, this thing that can sometimes feel like, you know, myself in my own little world, there's just, there's hundreds if not thousands of people who are all interested in, in, in my tiny little thing. So many kindred spirits. It's so great to be with people that like the things that you like, that support the things that you like, even if they don't know what it is that you like, they're still supporting you. It's just fun. <laughs> it's like recharging my batteries, my geek batteries. And it feels good, it's like taking like, this. I don't know, like just, just a deep dive into something that you love and then you come out of it feeling refreshed and kind of like remembering who you are. Going to Comic Con is just another way of meeting like-minded people, kind of like going to a sports bar on game day. Wanting to connect with other people is hardwired into our brain. Think of being social as humanity's superpower. Comic Con also gives you an opportunity to meet the people who make the stuff you love. If you sit through enough panels, you'll notice a pattern. Fans talk about how much these stories mean to them. I just went to a signing at the Funko booth with Brian Fuller. And just being able to say like, hey, by the way, your show made me want to write a TV pilot, and that TV pilot just sold. So, yay! Yes! I was just at a panel for hyperbole and a half. You know, someone asked a question, and it was really more of a statement about how the webcomic helped her understand depression for someone who was close to her in her life. Where else would you be able to go to someone who influenced and impacted your life that, that much and tell them directly, you have changed my life? It's all about gratitude, a super emotion that not only lifts your spirits, but lifts up the mood of everyone else there who's able to witness it. What about cosplay? I like to cosplay partially because I'm pretty crafty and I enjoy building. I also really like to show externally what I like when I've had to hold it in for so long and letting it out is a fun experience. When you are a kid, like people encourage you to like, dress up for Halloween and you can walk around in your snow white dress and no one cares. When you're adults, like, you need to dress in a suit and you need to walk around and be an adult. And I'm like, no, I want to dress up in a funky wig and right. have cool costumes and be somebody else for a day. Kind of also taking a take, your own personal take on something you like. It's just a chance for me to dress up like my heroes. There's nothing better for one's self-esteem, because I love Dana Scully, than like, Strangers just being like, <gasps> Scully! Yeah, and yeah. then we get to talk about X-Files. Dressing up like one of your favorite characters is just another way of expressing your identity. Like wearing a baseball hat or a football jersey. Now there is an ugly side to Comic-Con. Large gatherings like Comic-Cons, concerts, parades, and big sporting events can lead to something called de-individuation. People don't feel like an individual. They get lost in the crowd and feel like they can get away with things that they wouldn't otherwise do. 
That's why some cosplayers get harassed at Comic Cons. Yeah, I've had some like creepy guys over the years kind of want to take pictures and stuff. I do like a one-off, but if I'm not really feeling it, then usually I have my other friends are like, look, look that way, and then they're like, we're gonna kind of go this way. Look, look that way. <laughs> exactly. The good news is all it takes is a few people to stand up to create a surge of support in a crowd. Actually, the other day I saw this guy with a really big camera. He was zooming in on this one girl and uh, she didn't know and it bugged me so I kind of like stood behind her and blocked the camera and I felt, felt like a hero that day. Comic Con is also an exhausting experience and part of that is because of the long lines. And sometimes you're lining up to line up to go line up to buy something. We live in San Francisco. We stand in line to have brunch, so we're pretty used to it. If they could have huevos rancheros waiting for me inside the, yes. the session room. Suggestion box. <laughs> Why do people keep coming back despite these long lines? How you feel at the end of a long line is very important. If the line starts to speed up towards the end, or took less time than anticipated, or if you have an awesome time at the panel you waited for, your memory of the experience of waiting in line is totally changed. I love the lines. That's where a lot of the human connection happens. You strike up conversations with people you normally probably wouldn't even say hi to. Oh, nice Batman hat. Oh, I went to the Batman panel. I love Batman. I hate Batman. Pro tip. You want to make a new friend at Comic-Con? Turn to someone in line with you and ask them what they're excited to see today. What questions do you have about the psychology of Comic-Con? Let me know in the comments below. Click on San Diego Comic Con to subscribe and get more psychology.